the statement come Hello everybody, welcome back to Screen Stars. I'm here today to bring you my review for the 2024 horror sequel, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2. The film is directed by Reese Frake Waterfield and it stars Scott Chambers, Tallulah Evans, Ryan Oliver, Louis Santa, uh, we have Simon Callow and Alec Newman. Right. This is the sequel to uh, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey that came out last year, I think it was, um, to <laughs> uh, a critical mauling, I suppose you could say. Now, I I covered it and reviewed it on the channel. I didn't give it a great score. I think it was something like 4 out of 10. I can't 100% remember. But I remember thinking it had a lot of potential, but it just they just turned it into a basic slasher film with Winnie the people dressed as Winnie the Pooh in it um, and so it, it was a massively missed opportunity in my opinion now this time round I think because the first one it had a small budget and it ended up making about five million something like that so it was massively profitable so of course they were going to do a sequel in an actual fact they're going to be doing like a, a whole different Hooniverse or whatever they want to call it, Winnie the Pooniverse or something like that, because they're doing Bambi and all sorts. And how are they doing this? Well, it's because the name Winnie the Pooh and the others have kind of come into the public domain now, so you can kind of do what you want with those characters and you're not going to get sued. Um, so that's really why this, these films exist. Now, this time round... I think they have addressed some of the issues that I had last time round, and I th they've they've kind of almost started again. Uh, and what I mean by that is, and it's it's not particularly easy to explain, is they kind of the events that happened in the first film. They kind of explain that away in a movie. In this one, it's you know they've turned it into a movie, and uh, the, the massacre of a hundred hundred acre wood sort of thing, and that covers a kind of a few things right the first thing is is because um in that film christopher robin dies in the first one but in this one he's recast as by scott chambers it's scott chambers plays christopher robin this time round so they've kind of been able to kind of rewrite the what happened in the first one by explaining that well that was turned into a movie to the events that happened in this one um so we get a, we get a lot more of Christopher Robin this time. And that that's what I wanted to see in the first film. I wanted to see more of that story. And they've given us that. So they have now given us a bit more of a backstory. We do hear, see flashbacks. We get this whole story of uh, Christopher Robin's brother going missing as a child. Um, some madman experimenting on children. and uh, Which kind of explains away how we're getting these like creature... Uh, animal hybrids that is Winnie the Pooh and we've got Piglet and Owl and Tigger all these kind of stuff this time round in this one um, so they do try and explain it all away a bit better this time round and you know Scott Chambers and for those of you who don't know Scott Chambers is in actual fact Scott Jeffrey he produces this and many other low budget films that I have covered on this channel and most of them you know to be fair are not very good um, but hopefully he's kind of up in his game a bit now. And I have to say, after seeing him recently on the um, Dr. Jekyll film that I saw him in with um, Eddie Izzard, I, I was suitably impressed with his performance in that. And he's suitably impressive as well in this one, Scott Chambers. You know, the, the, the lad's got talent in regards to acting. I just wish he would channel it into better projects. So it does... This film has got a bigger budget because, you know... The first one wasn't a bigger budget, a big budget by any stretch of the imagination. So this is a larger budget, and it does show um, it, the production values are much better this time round. The effects are much better. The kills are much more graphic and brutal. Um, and the, even Winnie the Pooh and the others are talking in this one. So they, they, it, they've allowed themselves the creative freedom to kind of move on with the story and kind of move on with these characters and this world fleshing it out by kind of almost acknowledging that the first 
first film was almost like an experiment and it paid off so they're kind of like right okay well this could work so let's try this again shall we um and that's really what they've done with this film so i do like how they have kind of fleshed out this this whole world and this mythology of you know 100 acre wood and christopher robin and these creatures and how he became you know um attached to these things when they were young and it's it's not exactly what we think and it's certainly not a children's story um and in between all that, you know, you get some pretty impressive and very, very brutal kills. And then the final act of the film, uh, unfortunately, or maybe for some of you, fortunately, descends into slasher film again. Uh, arguably, you know, uh, impressive kills in regards to some of these slashers, but there's like a rave. I mean, who goes to raves anymore? Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, I never went to raves, but I'm not even sure they exist anymore. But anyway, there's a rave taking place and all these creatures turn up at this rave and start hacking and slashing. And um, and then it, it just basically turns into a standard slasher by the end of the film. And all you're really waiting for is the is the confrontation, if you like, between Christopher Robin and Pooh. Um, and you do kind of get that, but by that point, if you like, it almost feels like the ship has sailed. And there's also a very a good scene, uh, and it was a smart choice to cast Simon Callow. Um, and that's, I think actually Simon Callow was the narrator as well. I might be wrong, but there's like a there's a nice little bit of animation at the beginning um, and throughout the film occasionally. And I'm sure it's Simon Callow that narrates it. But he plays a character called Cavendish in the film, and he's like he's got a Scottish accent. Um, obviously to try and distinguish himself, I think, from the narrator's voice. Um, and he's basically the exposition dump of this film. But because it's done by such a high-quality actor as Simon Callow, it works. You know, and he, he kind of explains everything to Christopher Robin in regards to what's gone on, why, uh, how his brother went missing, what went wrong, um, you know what's how they came to be like Winnie the Pooh and these other creature hybrid sort of thing um and, and it was a good scene and it was well done so while I don't think that this film by any stretch of the imagination is going to um you know be you know on anyone's top 10 list or anything I think it is a step in the right direction from what we got in the first film. Um, if they're going to continue these films, and they quite clearly are, if they're going to continue, I would like to see them go carrying on in a similar direction. Give the films a bit of purpose and try and, um, I don't know, just, just be a little bit original with it. Don't just give us some of our, you know, childhood memories like Winnie the Pooh and tigger and owl and all this kind of stuff don't try and give us that and then bambi and all these other creatures and just turn them into these savage things you know try and give us some decent backstories for them try and give the films a little bit of meaning and i think you'll be onto something here because you know clearly you're onto something with the whole idea of winnie the pooh as a horror film people kind of lapped it up in the first one even if they didn't like it um, but I, I have to say I'm pleased that they put a little bit more effort in this one. Is it a great film? No. Are there problems with it? Yes. Um, but there are some entertaining stuff that's going on in here. And, you know, you can see the up in budget has kind of had a positive effect. So, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this review. I'll be back with more reviews and content on the channel very, very soon.